Today, Will and I are up in Seattle to get some player interviews on the sideline pregame. My goal was to get an interview with Logan Gilbert and Andres Munoz, talk about their all-star experience, as well as get some other guys to ask them about their draft experience with the MLB draft just taking place. The last time Will and I were in Seattle, he was smashing the 999 challenge. I think that's the only challenge that we have left. It's like, I have to compete now against the Mariners in dogs and beers. That's the next step. That'll, we'll, we'll do like the beer games or something. Absolutely. And it'll be me versus actual athletes. And this trip, we did get some food in. We did a Moto Pizza review later on in this video. One bite, everybody knows the rules. One bite. I'll have the timestamps in the description if you want to jump to a certain interview. Otherwise, let's get into it. These are my go-to sideline shoes. A big shout out to Buddy Buck Real Estate. Him and I closed our first Couch GM client up in Olympia. Definitely recommend him for real estate. And if you didn't already know, I am a mortgage broker full-time. You can visit brokerconnorweb.com to get in touch if you're looking to buy, sell, or refinance in the Pacific Northwest. When Will and I first got to the press box, we noticed some commotion going on in the home dugout. Turns out Jamie Moyer was holding a press conference as he was there to throw the first pitch to Dan Wilson, as this Friday night was the 25-year anniversary of the opening of T-Mobile Park. And it was Jamie Moyer to Dan Wilson 25 years ago for the first official pitch in this stadium. We didn't get there in time to ask Jamie any questions, but we did stick around for the Scott Service media availability before hanging around to watch batting practice. Then convinced Ryan Divish of the Seattle Times to jump on camera for a bit. All right, Ryan Divish, we're coming back from the All-Star break. What are your thoughts on the Mariners season so far? I think it's been better than I expected, but I'm not exactly somebody who expected a lot. Um, I thought the team would be pretty good. I didn't think it would be div lead the division good. And if you look at how they've done it, like they're leading division with having one of the worst offenses in baseball. I'm, I'm pretty stunned. So like, you know, I'm not really a fan, but like I would tell fans like, hey, you know, it wasn't an ideal way to have the first half go in terms of how production came and like how it finished. But at the same time, like you're still in first place after the All-Star break, which hasn't happened since 2002. Right. So yeah, that's probably my idea of first half. Coming into the season, what did you think the offense would do? Do you think it would be? Do you think it would be? It would be solid. I thought it would be decent because, yeah. like, I looked at guys like Polanco and Hanager and Garver. They've all been kind of consistent producers at the MLB level when they're healthy. So I never thought that you would have this kind of regression or this kind of um, struggle. And so, yeah, that's been the probably the most surprising thing. You know, obviously, like, I didn't think that Julio and JP would have the slow starts that they had. So it's like it's been pretty crazy like if you look at it they have one player over a 750 OPS right now that's Luke Rayleigh yeah. you know and guys like Cal and Julio you think are going to be right around 800 OPS even with the strikeouts and then JP who's usually around the 700 750 OPS because of the on base not getting that and then like even the new guys like you at no points in their careers other than like Hanover's injury have you seen this much struggle mm -hmm. and so that's been kind of the stunning thing because I thought you know I never thought that eight out of nine guys would struggle like that's the yeah. difference the next couple weeks are going to be a lot of moves happening what do you think the mariners will actually do this, this trade deadline abraham toro jesse winkler that's who they're going to get now um adam frazier yeah <laughs> hey, I, contact right I, adam I, frazier i'd love frazier to come back i mean he actually has value for the royals right now um I think they're going to try and make some moves. I don't know that there's a splashy move out there to be made other than Luis Robert. I mean, Luis Robert is a guy that is an impact guy, but there has to be a limit on what you're willing to give up and what you're, you know, and I think there are other teams that can bid just as much in terms of prospect capital. So, you know, it's hard to really understand what Chris Getz, the new White Sox GM, is going to do with this. You know, he's in a position to really reshape his roster by doing this, but you got to make sure you don't mess up. So what does he value more? Maybe he doesn't value what the Mariners have in terms of prospects. Maybe he feels like they need to have pitching more, and the Mariners don't really have the pitching prospects to kind of get them. Um, you know, the rest of the bats, because I don't believe Vlad Guerrero is available. Maybe that'll change. But the rest of them are not like sexy names, you know, yeah. unless you find Lamont Wade sexy or Brent Rooker sexy. Hi, Angie. Um, and then, um, I don't know. I mean, could they get those guys? 
the, the Mariners have had trouble getting trades with the A's lately. You know, they've tried and it just hasn't worked within the division. I've never, Jerry DePoto's never made a trade with the Angels. Um, you know, there's some history there with him and Artie Moreno, and I don't think Artie wants to see Jerry have any sort of success. Yeah. So y your field is even more limited. You know, you're talking about two division teams, you know, because Brent Rooker fits this Mariners team. He can help them. But, you know, maybe the A's don't want to move him to a division team. So, you know, that's, I look at it, they're going to add moves that maybe aren't the marquee names. But you know what? If they get marginally better, incrementally better at a couple positions, that'll be just as good. I mean, they have to improve in some ways. What they really need to do is have their core guys improve. You know, they need to have Julio and, and JP get going again and get up to their level. Yeah, the biggest impact that they can have is those guys coming out and producing. Yeah, I mean, I think they should still try to add just because you want to diversify your lineup. Right. You know, do you, th do you think they need more contact? I mean, hitter guys? Yeah, in an ideal world, but like, it's quality of contact. Like, you're not looking for a guy that's just out there slapping at it just because you want quality contact. It's like Rooker, he strikes out some, but he has a higher batting average, and when he does put the ball in play, he hits it hard. Like, I think they want a higher percentage of contact, but not necessarily giving up hitting the ball hard. You know, you're not looking right. for that, like a slap hitter you'd see in fast pitch stuff. You want somebody that can impact the baseball but do it more consistently than what they're doing right now. Yeah, and then last thing, the draft just happened. They took 15 pitchers out of their 20 selections. What are your thoughts on the draft overall and the guys that they were able to get? I mean, like, I wasn't surprised it went pitcher heavy, just kind of reading about where the draft was. And like, these guys are good at developing pitchers. Mm -hmm. And like, everybody thinks, oh, well, they have mini bats. Well, none of these guys are going to be ready for years right. anyways. And I think if they went, if I recall correctly, they went Harry Ford, first round pick, Cole Young, first round pick. Colt they, Emerson. Yeah, Colt Emerson, Johnny Vermello, Ty P, first round pick, Ben Williamson, second round pick, mm -hmm. Ty Locklear, second. They've drafted a lot of hitters yeah. over the last few years. It's cyclical. I think they need to get their pitching depth back. And, you know, these guys are good at finding pitching and developing and seeing something that others don't. I mean, two of the guys that are in the rotation right now, Bryce, Bryce Miller and Brian Moon, weren't exactly big prospect names. Right. You know, most people have Bryce as a reliever and Brian because of the injuries and lack of experience so you know if they're pitching guys see something in these guys then you should probably trust that they know it they know they see something that these guys can help and I mean some of these guys could help now like the kid from Kansas he could probably help by the end of the season you never know if he, if he comes in he's throwing 99 98 99 and you know he's already a built-in reliever so yeah get him in there and get him pitching and they have a two-way guy now that throws a hundred and hits he was leading the country in home runs, like 18 home runs through 22 games, and then he also threw 100 off the mound. Yeah. I mean, high upside guys, some potential uh, bullpen guys also. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, take the best player and see what you can do. Trust your development guys and see if you can build something into it. And I think, you know, you can say what you want about the Mariners as overall whole, but like they're they're drafting they're drafting and the development of getting these guys and, and finding them and then building them into prospects is has been pretty solid over the last few years. So, you know, I, I expect some of these pitchers to have an impact maybe as soon as next season. You know, some of these relievers that they got. I think you could see them as soon as next season if they if you if they uh, continue to progress. Yeah. Appreciate your time, Ryan. Yeah, no problem. So the MLB draft just occurred last week. Um, can you walk me through your draft day and what that experience was like? Yeah, um, got taken on the second day, so the seventh round, just sitting there with my family and um, obviously really exciting to hear your name called, but it was a funny story, like they didn't know anything about me when I got drafted, so everybody that got drafted, they had like a little clip to play. Yeah. And, the guys that were doing the draft were like, oh, I've never heard of this guy, and <laughs> they had to do some research. So I took a couple picks to for them to throw out some stats and video of me. So it was pretty pretty funny in the same sense. And then going through your road to the show since then, what has the journey been like for you? I know there's you've been moved around, you've been up and down. What has that journey and process been for you? Uh, it's been um, it's been a crazy one for sure. Yeah. Just kind of seemed like I hit every stop along the way. Um, coming here it was my fourth trade so been moved around and just kind of things have been wild throughout my uh my my baseball career yeah appreciate your time man yeah no problem first off congratulations on making the all-star game um what was that experience for you being in texas uh it was good it was a really good experience for me and especially i take this more more as a learning thing to me 
I, I, I was able to talk with a lot of relievers, with uh, share different experience, share different things. So uh, it was really good to be there and learn the most that I can. Did you learn some stuff from Emmanuel or Passe? Yes. Okay. Yes. Any takeaways that you can tell us? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, Not right yeah, now. Yeah. But I'm sure you're going to see it later. Yeah. I saw you got a picture with Aaron Judge. Is that a guy that you look up to in the big leagues? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's like, he's just the way that he play and the way that like everybody respect him and all that yeah. things that I, I really respect that I am really uh, I was really proud to I was able to meet him and and use uh, I, I don't know if you saw the video that like, he recognized him like uh, the the stuff that I have and it was a really exciting moment for me and, and I'm really happy for that yeah he was like you got to stop throwing one out too yeah he's like uh, obviously I got, I got very nervous when I met him but uh, as soon as I started to talk with him a little bit more inside the club I was, was a lot better and, and, and was good to meet him yeah and what was it like to be there with your teammate Logan Gilbert was great like yeah. especially because I follow him all the time I use like, hey, where we have to go? We go this way. I just follow you, and was was really good. And the, the thing that helped was a lot too was Freddie. Uh, he used like tell us at what time we have to be there, and yeah. he tried to investigate everything like at what time we have to be exactly there. So was really good to have him there and give me that confidence. So I don't going to be late for anything. Yeah, and then last thing, we just added Gregory Santos back to the bullpen. What does Gregory mean to this to this pitching staff to this bullpen? Oh, it means a lot. It means a lot. Uh, like I feel like we've been great uh, all the first half, and obviously, like we were, like, all the bullpen were working really hard. Uh, but now with like, his team, I hope like he everything starts to feel better in the bullpen, especially with the work workloads that we yeah. have. And and he's going to care. He's going to be great. He's a great pitcher, and he's going to help us a lot. Awesome. Excited for the second half. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you, man. See you too. So first time down on the field. What are your thoughts on uh, the experience so far? Uh, everyone's a little bit bigger than I expected. I'm not the biggest guy in the building anymore, and that's not typical. So, um, shouts out to Demo's trainer. Congratulations, dude is yoked. <laughs> also, I mean, uh, we, we just got an interview with Munoz, and Munoz, yes, he looks dude. a lot, I mean, he's bigger in person than you think. We were looking eye to eye. I see why he's able to throw, what, 102 yeah. or whatever. Uh, it's like if you stepped on the mound. And yeah. you've been playing baseball your entire life. If I stepped on the mound, still had hair, was more athletic, threw harder, <laughs> was better looking, and if I could hit 100 miles an hour, then yes, it's the exact same. The real question I need to ask him next time is who can down the most hot dogs and beers? I think that's the only challenge that we have left is like I have to compete now against the Mariners in dogs and beers. That's the next step. That'll We'll, we'll do like the beer games or something. Absolutely. And it'll be me versus actual athletes. Then I had to snag Bryce Miller and ask him about this Team Shark that the Mariners adopted. What's up, y'all? We got a, a Team Shark. His name is Chum. He's a hammerhead. Here's some facts about him. Uh, he's not very fast, so we got a slow shark. But um, we adopted him, and he was in South Carolina. Um, he's adventurous, so he's kind of hanging out by Delaware. If you're in Delaware, don't go to the beach. I don't know too much about it, so... I've seen you post it on the Mariners account. Well, that's, just, that can't be. <laughs> that's all. I, that's all I know. But so, I mean, what's the process of adopting hammerhead shark or picking a, a shark that you guys are following? The honest answer is they came up to me and said we got a shark and they wanted me to do a video on it. So who is they? People in there. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. They just said, "Hey, do this video." They gave me no information. I was like, "All right, I guess <laughs> I'll figure it out." Um, but I got the bracelet out of it. So okay. Um, cool. So the starting rotation is known by, you know, different cheeses. Have you guys talked about different sharks yet? Or is that just... No, I think uh, we'll just see what happens with, with the shark. Um, <laughs> at least I know where he's at, so I know where not to swim. Yeah, right. Uh, I'll stay out of that beach. But, uh, you know, we haven't got that far with it. And then uh, MLB draft just tapped in. Can you walk me through your draft day and what that day meant for you? Yeah, it was cool. Um, that was like it was the third time I, I went through it, uh, so I kind of knew what to expect. But it's 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 a really exciting day, but it's also a day where like you don't know where you're gonna go. You could end up you know all all over the country, and uh, so it's exciting, but it's 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 nerve wracking at the same time. But you know whoever picks you, that's where you're gonna be for the next few years. So yeah. um, like I said, it's exciting. But um, yeah, I, I was I was back home uh, with my family and a couple friends, and 
Uh, I was just waiting on the call, and uh, my agent called me and said I was going to Seattle. And I did the math. The Seattle was the furthest possible team from my hometown, oh, but uh, it's it's worked out pretty well. Did you hear at that time about the Mariners pitching, you know, development and what they have here, or was that not until you actually got involved in the system that you have started to yeah. see what they do? No, I I honestly didn't know anything about Seattle. Um, I, I grew up like three hours from from Houston, four hours from from Arlington, so. Mm -hmm. Um, I only thing I knew about Seattle was that they played uh, Houston and, and Texas a lot, but uh, I didn't I didn't know much about them or about the system. But I don't I don't think there's anywhere else that that would have been a better fit for me. So uh, really blessed to be where I'm at. Then Logan spent some time in the dugout answering questions from media about the All Star Game. Was the All Star Game it was good, really cool experience. Nice uh, being around everybody. And wish I could have threw, but it's all good. It was just cool being there for the first time. Was just saying there was a lot of talking among the pitchers, yeah. uh, getting to trade tips or talk shop. What was yeah. that kind of like? Um, it was fun. I mean, everybody there is so good that it's um, one, just to be fun being included in that group and also trying to figure out how everybody does their thing. I, I didn't get too crazy. Um, a few years ago, if I went to something like that, I probably would have changed every single group that I had, but it was fun uh, picking their brains a little bit. Do you feel like people are more open, even like in the middle of the season like this, than maybe they were a while ago? Um, I think so. In a setting like that, everybody's, it's kind of just like a, almost a celebration a little bit in a way. So I feel like everybody's in a good mood, just um, connecting with other players from other teams and willing to talk about whatever they need to. Where were you during Taylor's rounds in the home run derby? Tao? Yeah. Um, I was watching over by Mooney. That was actually my pick beforehand. I, I, I asked Tao the night before how he was feeling about it. He said, pretty good. So I told him that was my pick to win it. And, Doing it. What did Luis Castillo say to you when he gave you the watch? Um, he, it was actually just sitting in my locker, and he wasn't there at the time. But he also gave me a present last year for throwing a shutout. So if there's a Cartier watch sitting in my locker, I have a pretty good idea <laughs> who gave it to me. And I went outside, and I was like, "Was it you?" Just, you know, kind of playing it off, like, "What are you talking about?" But such a nice guy to do something like that that he really didn't have to do, but. As the older guy, he's done such a good job just kind of taking us under his wing. Munoz was starstruck by Aaron Judge. Was there any certain player that you were starstruck by? Um, that, would, that would probably be the one for me. Um, I feel like he just does everything right. Even being around him a little bit, you kind of feel the presence that he has as a leader, as a humble person, even though he's probably the best, one of the best players ever. Um, so that was, if there was anybody, it was probably him. Yeah. How do you feel health-wise right now? Obviously, maybe could have started in this series, but you're slotted for later on. Yeah, I feel really good. Um, this is probably the highest innings I've been at at this point, but fortunately, I've been really good. We have one of the best training staffs probably in the whole league, so they've helped me stay on the field, stay healthy. A series like this, I always wish I could be out there. It'd be really fun, um, but I, I also understand and love having a little bit of rest. It's uh, very much appreciated at this point in the season, and you know, hopefully, I blow past however many innings I threw last year. That's the goal, so uh, would love to be out there, but understand why. How much does time off from this last week and even for this series kind of help uh, work to your advantage in the long run? Um, yeah, it's, I, I think it's great. In years past, too, having a break at this point in the season, like you would give anything for a few extra days um, and hopefully be able to hit the ground running. Because what it does, like at the end of the year, we're, not just playing for August and September. Hopefully we want to make a run as deep as we can. And having a few days right now can really help kind of set you up in the right direction later on. You are such a routine-oriented player, though, and that's part of what has helped you throw so many innings. So was that a challenge, like traveling to Texas and kind of being out of it, but not throwing, sort of being out of routine a little? Uh, a little bit. I kind of felt like I was there and didn't know what to do because I knew I wasn't throwing in the game. So I was kind of just like, every second I'm at the field, I usually am. I know what I'm supposed to be doing, and I was just kind of sitting there like, I don't know what to do with myself. Um, but it, I did this basically the same routine throwing-wise that I did in years past, so it helps that I've had a couple breaks now that I know like I'll throw one and a half days almost of what I usually do here. So it, it set me up, I think, in the right direction. I felt great for it. Did you find yourself actually you know, trying to figure out like, during the game what you would be doing against those others? Um, it was, it was fun, but 
a lineup like that, I just kept looking up at the scoreboard, and it's like every single person there is like 950 OPS. And it's like, <laughs> this is crazy. You usually run into a team that maybe the three or four batter is like that, maybe, but the whole lineup was like that. So it's it would have been a really fun challenge, but also like those guys are doing so well. It's, it was less stressful being able to know I'm not pitching and just like taking the whole experience. Was there a moment where you looked around the field and thought, wow, these are the best players in baseball right now and I am part of this group? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I think um, I took the like team picture next to Judge. And it was, uh, for a second there, I was like, this is pretty crazy just because of how good he is. And then seeing what Otani did from the dugout, it's like, these really are some of the best players to ever play, not just now, but ever. So being included in that is it's kind of humbling in a way, a big honor, just that I could do something that, you know, I've always dreamt of being there with those guys. I was walking the red carpet. That was cool. I know you love attention. Yeah, so. <laughs> I, I, I'm built for it, clearly. Um, it was nice. It was really fun with my wife having her there, and I think she really enjoyed it, too. Um, it's nice to have just, like, little moments of celebration like that. And, you know, in season, you're almost head down the entire time. Just, what am I doing today? But for a couple days, you just kind of take it in and know that we worked really hard to get there. She's done as much as me to get me in a good place mentally as well. So I feel like it was fun for both, for both of us to enjoy that. Were there any uh, jersey swaps taking place or autographs? Um, most guys like had one like their backup jersey that they gave you. The whole team had them sign. So okay. most guys did that. So there was like a table that each player had their jersey at, and you just go around and sign them all. So I have one in the locker right now. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. I'll probably have it framed just because it's like some of the greatest players all signing your jersey. It's pretty cool. Sweet. All right, thank you guys. Then Will and I went up to the 300 level to go find Moto Pizza. You can find Moto Pizza over around section 314, and there's likely gonna be a solid line, so be prepared to wait for a little bit. Here is Moto's Pizza menu. We decided to try out the crab pizza and the kissed pizza. This is the crab pizza on the left, and then on the right is the kissed pizza. The crab pizza basically has Parmesan on crab, and the kissed is pepperoni, sausage, honey, and more. Cheers. Cheers. We started off trying the crab pizza. A lot of Parmesan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not bad though. Didn't taste any crab on that one. Yeah, a little bit. There isn't much crab, but it's not bad. It's definitely a Seattle, like, you know, yeah. coast kind of pizza. Mm -hmm. One bite, everybody knows the rules. One bite. I don't hate it. Like, genuinely, I don't hate it. It is good. Mm hmm. It's not like a crab sandwich if you're going for actual crab. Right. Like it's not super strong crab. Mm hmm. It's light crab. And then the Parmesan really comes mm -hmm. through. Light crab. Light crab. But not bad. What would that one be out of 10? Mm hmm. It's light crab, but it's basically a cheese pizza. Out of 10. 7.5. Six, seven point six, I think. Good. It was. It's good. I would. I would get it again. That's how I'd handle that. I would say like six, eight. Yeah. A little lower for me, but tall score, yeah, but okay. Definitely. Uh. Yeah, the Parmesan. A lot of Parmesan. It's more a of a Parmesan right. with a hint of crab. Yeah, like a little crab aftertaste. <clears throat> but I love Parmesan, so. Now this one actually, I'm a little more excited for. It's got the pepperoni, that catches the grease in it. Yep. That's where the fat guy lives for me. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's that, what you get pizza for. That's a good pie. That's a good pie. It's very like Domino's deep dish. Mm -hmm. The flavor is off the charts. The sauce is nice and sweet. It is so called good. the Kissed, so I believe it has honey on it, too. That's what I'm tasting. Yeah. The honey. So good, dude. That drip. Oh, yeah. A little drip. I'd eat this again. This would be where Fat Will would come out and do the 999 again. Nine pizzas, nine beers. Nine slices, nine oh. beers. How many innings do you think you'd make it on that one? I think I could do it. You could do full nine? I think so. Okay, that's going to happen at some with, point. With this? Well, I guess there's no value pizzas, so we're going to have to get like a sponsor on that one or mm -hmm. do a cash out refinance. Moto, sponsor us. Yeah, there you go. I will eat 
I'll eat nine kissed if Moto sponsors us. I'll do it, no problem. No problem, easy. <laughs> I might even up the beers to... 12 beers, nine slices no. of pizza. <laughs> like, maybe we throw in a Bodie or two. Or maybe that one guy, since apparently it doesn't count if you don't drink Irish Death. Loser. Well, the people in the comments that do this every night for baseball games, as they say. <laughs> That's my average summer night. All right, what would you give this one? That's a 9-0. 9-0. That was really good. If I was going to go back... I'll do an 8-7 then. If I go back, I'm having the kiss. It kissed me with flavor. There's the food review. The pizza was solid. Moto Pizza, if you're watching this, Will has committed to do the nine slices, nine beers, and nine innings challenge if you pay for the pizza. Then the actual game took place, and we don't need to talk about it, but seriously, the Mariners were the quickest team in history to blow a 10-game divisional lead. On June 18th, they were 10 games ahead of the Houston Astros and the Texas Rangers, the largest divisional lead that they've had since 2001. They squandered that 10-game divisional lead in just 24 games. They beat that record of 33 games by 9 games. Alright, first day at media for Will, what did you think overall of the experience? I thought it was sweet, man. Um, really gracious for what the Seattle Mariners were able to allow us to do, get out on the field. I'll tell you what, and I'll tell as many people as I possibly can, Dylan Moore, please give me your personal trainer. I'd like your nutritionist, because holy crap, you're jacked. Um, Andres Munoz, awesome guy, really nice. Don't listen to Portland radio. Um, and Logan Gilbert was extremely gracious, service, loved that. I had a great time, dude. It was, ex it was awesome. Can't wait to come back. Yeah, it's pretty mind-blowing how big the players actually are when you're on the field next to them. They're the same size as me. Yeah. No this, one's the same size as me. This dude's massive. I mean, Munoz is just as big as him. Crazy. Yeah, so Mariners couldn't pull it off this time, but another fun experience at T-Mobile Park will be behind the scenes for another vlog at some point soon. See you guys.